Hello and welcome to Thursday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic. And what a fine day it is to be part of the Cracking the Cryptic family. We have just released uh, Scott Strosal's Puzzle Hunt um, this afternoon, and it's already garnered some huge praise. I'm not surprised. Um, it's also garnering some questions as well. Uh, now remember, the Puzzle Hunt isn't necessarily going to be easy. And I will just give you a very small hint, which is that if you are stuck on one of the puzzles, there are at least two Sudoku videos that we've published in our back catalogue that I think are well worth revisiting um, to sort of check out some of the logic in those puzzles. Uh, anyway, I'm not going to say more than that. Now, many of you have also spotted that we have released a mysterious video earlier on today uh, on the channel. It's only 50 seconds long. Um, but I urge you all to take a look at it and I'll put a card on the screen if I remember. The card will go, where will it go? There, there, that card, click that card. Um, uh, and I'll say nothing about that video except ARG. Um, now, um, the other thing I wanted to do before we get on to today's puzzle is to mention uh, an update on yesterday's classic Sudoku, this Tatooine sunset puzzle. Um, by Philip Newman that I had an aborted attempt to video because I, I got stuck on it basically. I did finish it last night. I now know how it's done logically. Um, it is, uh, well, good grief is it, it was a struggle. It is a monstrously hard puzzle. And if you do have a go at it, then uh, prepare for battle basically. Um, I think the hardest thing about it is not necessarily the techniques involved, which are complicated, but it's sort of keeping track of all those techniques and there are so many of them and I ended up with so many colors in the grid that it was hard to see the wood for the trees but it's definitely worth trying and I'll try and remember to put a link to that puzzle under the video as well. Uh, also I'll keep an eye on the comments to this video and if there does seem to be appetite for it I may do a bonus Patreon solve of that puzzle uh, in due course. Um, now what's today's puzzle? What have we got? Well today we have a puzzle called Progress City by Dimono. Uh, now, this puzzle has among its admirers uh, Fistimafel, no less. Um, so this should be absolutely brilliant. And it has a very simple rule set. What we've got is normal Sudoku rules and normal killer Sudoku rules. So killer Sudoku rules, basically, those three squares have got to add up to 10, the digit in the top left-hand corner of the cage, and you can't repeat a digit in a cage. And that's all there is to it. So with that, we can we can have a go. If you want to play the puzzle yourself, the way to play is to click the link under the video as usual. And now I get to play. Let's get cracking. I'm in the new software today, continuing to test this out. I can put one, two, and three into those squares because that's the only way of making six in three cells if you can't repeat a digit. So the 10, these cells in the 10 cage now can't, take one two or three so they've got to be four five six or seven they can't be eight because you can't put two ones into the other two positions um, because you'll repeat the digit in a cage um, now as so often recently i shouldn't be surprised by this but there are absolutely no given cages are there apart from this one nine cage can be made in three different ways in three cells Nothing else is useful at all. <laughs> so we're going to have to do something clever right at the outset. What, where are you, clever thing that we can do? Maybe, is it these 16 cages? They're a bit suspiciously symmetrical, aren't they? Um, yes, it is. This is, yeah, this is clever, actually. Now... We've used up the one, two, and the three in column four. So what are the lowest digits we could put in the balance in, in these two dominoes? Well, that's going to be four, five, six, and seven. Now, in fact, I think these cells have to be four, five, six, and seven. And the reason is that these two cages together add up to 32. Now, if these cells, are, well, four, five, six, and seven adds up to 22, I think. So if these cells are any higher than 22, these cells would have to add up to less than 10, and that's impossible. You can't make four cells in the same column add up to less than 10. If you put one, two, three, and four in, that adds up to 10 exactly, and in fact it has to here. 
So these squares are 4, 5, 6 and 7. That means those two squares are 8 and 9. I wonder why it's called Progress City. It's quite rare to find killer Sudokus with names. Vistamafel sometimes names his, but... Um, Ah, so now, yeah, this is interesting. This is interesting. We've got t symmetrical 10 cages as well. But in both of these boxes, we have two low digits already used up. So I th I'm, my feeling is, this is just instinct. Uh, it's not based on logic yet, but these U pentominoes must be restricted at least a little bit. Yeah, okay. In fact, this is very this is very clever. Ah uh, yeah, this is lovely. So let's think about <laughs> let's think about whether it's possible for this domino to add up to anything except five. <laughs> That's the critical question. Can this domino add up to anything except five? Well, what should we try? Should we try and make it, if we try and make it lower than five, then we're saying that those five cells together add up to less than 15. Well, that's impossible because if I put the numbers one, two, three, four, and five into the U pentomino, that adds up to exactly 15. So you can never make these digits add up to less than five. Now, if you make them add up to more than five, the corollary of these adding up to more than five, of course, is that these add up to less than five. And so these five cells add up to less than 15. So that is beautiful. These have to both. So these dominoes add up to five. And yeah, five and 10 is 15. So we actually know the composition of the 10 cage. The 10 cage must include a five in both cases because these five cells have to be the digits one, two, three, and four, and five. That is beautiful. Now, does it help us though? Yeah, oh yeah, look, this one. So now where does, yeah, where does the eight, where does whatever goes in that cell go in box one? It must go here. And the same is true for this one. So these, this eight, nine pair makes a reappearance in column two. Oh, this puzzle is weird, look at that. So now, because we've used one, two, three, four, and five already in boxes one and seven, these three squares have got to be six, seven, eight, and nine in some order. But this column already has an eight and a nine in it, so those two squares can't be eight and nine. So there is now a six, seven pair in column two. So these squares have to be one, two, three, four, or five. Ah, ah, and they can't be five because we know that the five in box seven is locked into column one and column two. We know the five in box one is locked into column one and column two. So the question is, where does the five go in column three? It must be in one of those three cells and therefore it's not in one of those three cells. The other trick we can do with that, look, this square can't be a one or a two because that's going to break the 20 cage, but that wasn't what I was thinking of. In fact, oh, I've got to the same point using different logic because what I was going to say is if the 20 cage can't contain a five and it can't because the fives are already taken in columns one and columns two, then the 20 cage must contain a nine. And we know that because if there's no nine in a 20 cage, the only way of getting to 20 is with five, seven and eight. So now I've just got this a different way by working out this square can only be a three or a four. Now, once this square is a three or four, we know there's a nine in the cage because it's either going to be three, eight, nine or three, seven, nine. So that's not a nine there. So so we've got a one, two, three, four quadruple in column three. So these squares have got to be five, six, seven, eight, or nine. That can't be a nine because it's in the 15 cage and that would break. Uh, 
Uh, this square's got to be 7, 8 or 9. This square can't be 6 either because we know this is either a 7, 9 pair or an 8, 9 pair given that this is a 3 or a 4. And I think I'm running out of ideas on the left hand side of this grid actually. Stru ah, there's a quadruple there. Actually, this. <laughs> so the symmetrical logic continues. Look, we've got two six, seven, eight, nine quadruples in row three and row seven. Now that means all those squares have got to be one, two, three, four, and five. Now, do we get anything off that? We. Yes, we do. The nine cage is now. Yeah, the nine cage is determined. Now, why is it determined? Well, I know there are three ways of getting to nine in three cells, and two of those ways use only a subset of the digits one, two, three, four, and five. Well, if I select either two, three, four in here, that's one way, or one, three, five in there, that would be another way, you can see I've now got six cells in box three that I'm selecting from just five different digits. Ergo, one of the digits must be repeated. Ergo, you've made a mistake. So this is not one, three, five, or two, three, four. It's one, two, six. There's no one, two in there. Three, four, five, triple now emerges. Let's get rid of the three, four, five there. Um, those have got to be seven, eight, and nine. This has got to be a five or a six because it's in a seven cage. Three, four, five. One, two, six. Oh, I feel like that was quite a big breakthrough, but I think I'm not sure I'm actually. Ah, yeah, look, there's a seven, eight, nine triple in row two. So that's not seven. Almost, look, we've almost got a four, five, six, or I suppose a five, six, seven triple there. It's closer to being a four, five, six triple. Oh, oh, no, 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 no. Look, we can, I was forgetting. I know those two add up to five. Now, if those two add up to five, one obvious thing we can note is that those two squares must add up to 11 because Five, well, 16 minus 5 is, yes, you've guessed it, 11. Another knowledge bomb from cracking the cryptic. Now, if those add up to 11, can they be 5 and 6? No, because that will break that cell. So this is not 5 and 6, and if it's not 5 and 6, we actually know it's 4 and 7. That 4 rules 1 4 out as a way of making 5 here. So that's 2 3. This is 1 4. 1 4 can be removed from there. Those two squares now have to be 5 and 6. So let's put that in. That's not 5 in here anymore. And there's all sorts of things now going on. 2, 3 here. We can remove 2, 3 from there. 4, that gets removed. Um, oh dear, now I'm stuck. Uh, oh! It was going so well. Um, oh, sorry. Yeah, it's, I have a feeling that this must go further than this because that again felt like quite a clever deduction. Um, unfortunately, I'm not seeing how to take that forward. Maybe. Yeah, maybe this row. I want to look at this row again. What can this square be? Because this can't be 7, 8, and 9. It can't be 1, 2. And it can't be 4. So the options for this square, I think, are 3 or 6. Is that everything? No, there should be... What else could it be? It can't be 7, 8, 9. It can't be 1, so it can be 3. It can't be 4. Why can't it be 5, actually? No, it can be 5. Okay, it can be 5. No, I'm sorry. I can't see how to do that. Um, so maybe we're meant to look somewhere else now. 
If so, where? Right, let's have a look down here. There's a 13 cage here. Now a 13 cage in four cells can never have an eight or a nine in it. So the eight, nine in this box are definitely in two of these three squares. Which means there's definitely an eight, nine in two of these three squares in box six, because we know that the eight, nines now in boxes three and box nine are locked into column seven and eight. And we need to put some eights and nines into column nine. Now, okay, is this useful? Um, it might be. <laughs> uh, hmm. No, I'm getting a bit stuck here. That's interesting though. You can't put, this can't be an eight, nine pair because that will break this box. You can't put seven into both of these squares. So in fact, that square has to be an eight or a nine. Is that useful? I don't know. Oh, coming to an ugly halt now got to think of something else to do. What is the other thing we can think of to do? Maybe I can use, can I use these 10 cages? Yes, I, well, I can, I can use them. Yes, I can. I can use them because I can make one deduction that's useful. That deduction is that because these two squares have to be relatively high, i.e. they can't be one, two or three, I can't put a six into any of those squares. And if I can't put a six into any of those squares, where do I put a six in column seven? It's gonna to have to be in those two squares. Why does that matter? Well, that makes that a six, eight, nine triple. And it means there must be a seven in the 13 cage. That's means the 13 cage is one, two, three, seven. Actually, you know what I could have done to get this a different way, I suspect. Actually, it might not have been so, four, five. Well, I could have got this down. Yeah, I could have, I could have done this a bit more easily, I think, using arithmetic. If we look at the maximum value of those two squares, it could have been four, five. That's nine, nine and 13 is 22. So we know that those three squares are at least equal to 23. Now, once we knew that, you can actually see this can't be a seven, eight, nine triple because that would break those two squares. So this has to be six, eight, nine. I don't know that we would have known that the six was definitely in these two squares though. Um, but anyway, um, so now we've got a six, seven, eight, nine quadruple in column seven, which means these two squares or three squares have to be from the digits one, two, three, four, and five. Is that helpful? Well, what is helpful is if these are 23 and this is 13, these do have to add up to nine and there's only one way of doing that. So this is four, five. That means we get a three in the grid. No threes there, no threes there. Three is not here. Three is in one of those three squares, which means three is not there. So we get another three in the grid. And we get, oh, a four, five pair there, look, means there's no four there. Oh, no four there, I didn't want to do that. Take the four away, go away four. There must be a seven look in one of those three squares looking just at this box. So there's no seven there. So we've got a one, two, three triple in row seven. Oh, and a six, oh yeah, look, there's a six, eight, nine triple in row eight. That means that square's determined. That's a five, that's a six, that's a six now. That's not a five.
so now just, I was thinking about the 18 cage now this square is actually it can't well it could be a 7 yeah let's think about this square this square can't be a 1 2 or a 3 because if it is those three squares would sum up to 6 and we'd have to put 12 into this square and even in my new software that's impossible so this is higher than a 3 it could be a 4 it can't be a 5 6 it could be a 7 and it can't be an 8 or a 9 so this is 4 or 7 now if it's 4 you'd have to put 2 3 there that would be 9 if it's 7 the maximum value of those two squares would be 2 and 3 so you'd have to have at least 6 here right and you can't have 6 here so this is a this is a 7 8 or a 9 which is useless bobbins double bobbins um no don't know <laughs> don't know um seven can be removed from that square ah that gives me an eight nine pair in column seven so this is a seven eight nine there's eight nine pairs all over the shop ah and the four five pair there as well So one, two, six, and seven. Aha. Uh -huh. So what's the value of these two squares look? And I ask that because if we look at column seven of the grid, we've got a four, five in this square, which means the one and the two are definitely in those squares. So these two squares can't be one, two. They can't be three. They can't be four or five. And they can't be eight and nine. So these two squares are a six, seven pair. That's not six. That's not seven. And ah, stuck again. That's not three. Ah, this this three gives me a four here. Look, that means those two squares have got to be seven and nine, which means that's not seven. And maybe this is the breakthrough we're after. That's not four. That's not four, which means we get a four in the corner. Nobody puts four in the corner. Um, except me. Uh, no, okay. So it's, it's still definitely being recalcitrant, isn't it? It's not giving up its secrets the way I thought it might. And so which boxes have I got? I've used this box. I've sort of used this box. I have thought about this box. Can we do more with these 10 cages? We know. Oh, yes, we can. This is, an in this is the interesting square, look. Why is this square interesting? Well, because if we look at this column, we know that they're at the one and the two are in two of these three cells. Well, if they're here, if they're in this domino, that square's a 7. If they're not in this domino, one of them must be there, and it joins its partner there, and that must be a 7. So there is definitely a 7 in these two squares. That's quite interesting. Now, okay, so that means there's a 7 in one of those two squares in box 8. Bingo! That can't be a 7 now. If this is a seven, that has to be a four, and therefore you can't and you can't make those two squares add up to seven. So the seven is not at the bottom. This is a seven. Which <laughs> doesn't do anything. I don't believe it. No. Uh Well, four must be in one of those squares now. He says grasping at straws. So four is not in one of those two squares. Right, okay, well I can do more here now. I can't put a six into either of those squares because that breaks the 10 cage they're in. If you put a six here, you have to put a three in one of those squares and you can't. Same thing's true here. 
it's not possible to put a three in here. And the only way, if you obviously, if you use six, a 10 cage has to be one, three, six. So in fact, this is a five, seven pair. Okay, which means what? That means that's not five. Oh, you, it must mean more than this. <laughs> um, oh, I'm so sorry. I don't know what I'm missing here. Uh, this square's got to be an eight or a nine because now whatever this square is has a mirror in this position. Oh, I know what we can do. We can use the 18 cage. That can't be 9 now, because if once this is 7, if this is 9, you have to put two ones into the cage, and that's not possible. So this must be 8, which means these two squares don't include 3. This is a 1-2 pair, and therefore we get a 3 here, and maybe we're off and running again. 8 here means we're going to get all these 9s done, aren't we? 9-8. Nine, 9-8. Eight. Nine, eight. Eight, oh no, almost made an error. I read that as eight, nine. It's not an eight, nine. Um, eight, nine, ah, seven, nine. Remove nine from those squares. This eight gives me a six here. That gives me a seven and a nine and an eight and a nine. Remove the seven from that one. This one is a six. This is an eight. Remove eight from all of those. And I think... Actually, I'm not saying anything. I'm not saying anything. I don't trust myself. This is a 3-4 pair. This 3-4 pair sees that square. 6, 5, 2, 1. That can't be a 1 now. So there must be a 1 in this 10 cage. 3-4. This one actually fixes that as well, doesn't it? So this column is getting quite cluttered. This square has to be an 8 or a 9 and can't be an 8. The 3 and the 2 get fixed. That fixes a 2, 1, 6 pairing. That fixes the 1 and the 5. That fixes a 5 in the corner. I'm going to put 5s in the corner as well in this puzzle. Um, okay, this can't be a 7 because of the 7 in the box. These two squares add up to eight, so we can remove the one from there as well. This becomes a one. This becomes a one. If this is a five, this is a four. If this is a seven, this is a two. So this is never five. Oh, and this is the same. This is never five. So the five goes there. This becomes a four. Four, five, two, one, seven. Yeah, I think we are. I think it, finally it's giving up its secrets. Oops, nearly made another error. Don't make errors. That's not the way to get Sudoku done efficiently. Six and seven there. Now we get a five here, which should actually finish up all of that stuff and does. Gives me a five there. That's a seven. These two squares are three and eight, which I can't resolve. This square is a two. That one fixes the one, three, oopsie, fixes the three, eight. That fixes the eight here. So down this column, we still need four, six, and nine. So this should be six. This should be four. This should be nine. This should be nine. This should be eight. And if I haven't made an error, I can put a five in there and click check. Yes, that's how to do it. What a great puzzle. That was brilliant. Some really tight logic. The start is gorgeous. And then I think I wasn't very efficient. The nine was very clever, but I really had to work hard for the break in around this 18 cage, 13 cage, and these 10, 10 cells here. There may well have been something cleaner. Uh, so let me know in the comments if you spot anything better. Thank you very much for watching. Do check out that 50 uh, second video I mentioned earlier. It is worth your while. And we'll be back later with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic. And that's the final thing I want to do.